Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson. My name is uh, Mr. Lim KH and today we will be going through a P6 Science Essay 1 paper from 2019 Mahabodhi. Let's start off with um, the booklet A MCQ question. Okay, question one. Which of the following represents a community? Okay, so a community. Um, a f a frog and tadpoles in a pond. Um, there are no other organisms. Okay, cockroaches, nymphs, and eggs on a shelf. Also, no other organisms. Butterflies, uh, caterpillars, and eggs um, on a plant. Um, probably not. Okay, earthworms, uh, spiders, and grasshoppers in a garden. Yep, there are like three different types of um, organisms and a habitat. Okay, so the answer for question one will be number four. Question two, which of the following shows the direct transfer of energy correctly? Okay, they're asking for direct transfer. Okay, sun to plant eater. Um, sun will have to go through the plant before it can reach the plant eater. Okay, plant to animal eater, also probably not because um, animal eater, they don't eat plants. Plant eater <clears throat> um, to animal eater, um, probably yes, but we checked the last one. Uh, animal eater to plant eater, so the last one is obviously wrong also. Okay, so the correct one that shows the direct transfer of energy correctly will be from the plant eater to animal eater. Answer will be number three. Question three, which of the following are examples of uh, behavioral adaptations? So behavioral adaptations um, refers to a certain behavior that um, animals adapt. Okay, animals have long hind legs. This one is structural, so this is wrong. It bears height and uh, rest during the winter. This is probably a behavioral adaptation. Okay, peacocks have uh, colorful tail feathers. This is a structural. And uh, D, penguins huddle together to keep warm. This is a behavioral. So the answer should be B and D. B and D, number two. Question four. Which of the following most accurately shows the energy conversion of a power, a battery powered torch? So it starts from a battery. Any um, devices that starts from a battery will start with uh, chemical energy. So immediately we can eliminate a uh, one and three. Okay, chemical potential energy will need to be converted into electrical energy before it can be converted into light and heat. So the answer will be number four. Question five, ball was thrown towards the wall. Okay, it traveled from um, X to Y and then to Z, okay, as shown below. So which of the following shows that a force was exerted by the wall on the ball? Okay, the ball, um, sorry, the moving ball stopped. Um, it did not stop, it changed the direction, right? Okay, the moving ball speed up, probably also not. The stationary ball moved. Um, it wasn't stationary in the first place. It's moving. <clears throat> okay, the moving ball changed direction. Yes. Okay, this is one of the effects of uh, forces. Okay, it can change the direction of a moving object. Question six. There is shown a light on the container below. Which of the following is uh, not possible shadows for the container? Mm, number um, A doesn't look like it's possible because um, the handle is missing. Okay, B is possible if you shine in this direction. Okay, C is possible if you shine in this direction. And D is possible if you shine from either the bottom or the top. Okay, uh, they're asking for which of the following is not possible. Since it's not possible, then the answer will be number one.
Question 7, which of the following processes require heat gain? Heat gain, okay? Boiling requires heat gain. Melting also requires heat gain. Evaporation requires heat gain. And condensation requires heat loss, right? Okay, so the answer will be A, B, and C, number 3. Question 8. Three animals X, Y, and Z reproduced by laying eggs. Okay, the table below shows the characteristics of these animals. Okay, animal X, Y, and um, Z, they have a um, different number of legs, 6, 6, and 4. Uh, number of stages in their life cycle is also different for 3 and 3. Okay, based on the characteristics above, what could possibly be animal X, Y, and Z? So we can um, slowly do our elimination process because there are a lot of options. Okay, animal X, a butterfly, is it um, number of legs 6 and um, stages is 4. Okay, let's say I'm not so sure about animal X. Let's go to Y. Okay, cockroach, uh, number of legs is 6. Number of stages is 3. I know this is definitely correct. A frog, uh, number of legs 4. Okay, number of stages 3. Okay. Now let's go to uh, number two, number two, uh, and a uh, number of legs six. Okay, but number of um, stages four is uh, wrong. Butterfly is also wrong because butterfly is a uh, four stage. Grasshopper. Mm, mm, okay, this is correct. But once you have a cross in any one of the option, it means that number two is definitely out. Okay, number three. So uh, cockroaches do not have four stages. Okay, so when I cross out the first one, I'm going to cross out number three, so I'm not going to go through the rest. Number four, okay, mealworm, they do not have um, six legs, so I'm going to cross out the first one also, which means that I'm also going to cross out option four, okay, which means that I'm only left with option one. Okay, question 9. Which of the following diagrams correctly shows the process in the life cycle of a flowering plant? Okay, flowering plant. So, um, the options below shows you seeds to young plant and adult plant. Let's scroll down to make sure all of them are the same. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yup. Okay, we have uh, fertilization and germination is not over here. Okay, germination is not over here, so 1 and 2 is, they are out. Okay, seed will germinate into a young plant, okay, adult plant, and then the adult plant will produce uh, flowers, and then after fertilization, they will produce seed. Okay, option 4 is wrong because seed do not uh, go through fertilization to become a young plant. Answer is number 3. Okay, question 10. Blood leaving the small intestine carries more something than the blood entering it. Okay, so blood um, leaving the small intestine carries more food, um, probably, but um, it'd be better if they said digested food instead. Okay, um, does it carry more oxygen? Probably not. Uh, more carbon dioxide? Yes, because the small intestine, uh, the cells in the small intestine will be using up the oxygen. Okay, so the answer should be A and C. Do we have A and C? Yes, option number two. Question 11. The diagrams below show the setup of an experiment to study the digestion of food. Each beaker contains a food X and the same amount of digestive juice. In which setup would the food be completely digested first? Okay, so we have uh, 15 grams, 30 grams, and we have it in smaller pieces and like a, a, a one whole piece. So uh, when there is like lesser amount of food, the digestion will be faster because when the piece of food is uh, smaller, there will be um, a more increased exposed surface area. Okay, but in this case, uh, option three, the food pieces are cut into the the food is cut into smaller pieces, so this will even like increase the exposed surface area 
Uh, and so the answer will be number three. Question 12. Henry puts a plant into a beaker of water uh, in which some blue ink has been added. A few hours later, he observes that the flowers turn into uh, turn from white okay, to blue, the flower. So what can Henry conclude from this experiment? <clears throat> okay, water is absorbed by the roots. Mm. The stem joins the roots to the rest of the plant. The water is lost to the surroundings from the leaves. Um, not really, number three. Okay, option four, the stem carries water from the roots to the rest of the plant. So let's go through option number one again. Uh, water is absorbed by the roots. Okay, so we can't really... Um, conclude this from the experiment unless we measure the amount of water before and after and also we need to apply a layer of oil so as to make sure that the amount of water loss is only due to um, the, the roots and not evaporation okay does this experiment um, show that the stem joins the roots to the rest of the plant um, this experiment doesn't really show that Okay, so does it show that the stem carries water from the roots to the rest of the plant? Um, it does because the flower turned from white to blue. Okay, so it shows that the the water with the blue ink probably okay went up, traveled up, and reached other parts of the plant. So the answer will be number four. Question thirteen. Christina wants to investigate the effect of uh, water on plant growth. Okay, which one of the following shows correctly the number of um, setups, the variable change, and the variable measured for the investigation? Okay, so she wants to investigate the effect of water on the plant growth. Okay, which means that. Um, Okay, the variable change should be changed should be the amount of water. Okay, and the variable measured should be um, the plant growth, which is the number of leaves. Okay, the answer should be number um, three. Okay, number of setups three. Okay. Question 14, PQRS represent uh, four organisms in the habitat. Okay, so P is a predator of S, S is a prey to R, Q is a predator of P, and R is a prey to Q. Okay, sounds confusing. Which, uh, using the information given above, which of the following most correctly represents PQR and S? Okay, so we're gonna um, try to draw the food chain or the food web. P is a predator of S. Okay. <clears throat> S is a prey to R. So um S is a prey to R. The Q is a predator of P. P is um eaten by Q, right? Which means that we can um, add this to here. Q. Okay, Q is a predator of P. And um, R is a prey to Q. So R is a prey to Q. Okay, so I'm gonna um, consolidate S. It's gonna be eaten by um, P and R. And then after that, they'll go, uh, they'll both be eaten by Q. Okay, using the information given above, which are the following most correctly um, represents P, Q, R, and S. Um, is P a plant eater? Mm. Okay, I'm not so sure if um, S is a plant or not, so let us uh, check the rest. <clears throat> Q is an animal eater, R is a um, plant eater maybe. S is a producer, okay, maybe. 
let us uh, keep this option one open okay p is a animal eater okay q is a plant eater definitely not so option two is out q is a producer okay also definitely not uh, option three is also out okay p is an animal eater okay q is an animal eater r is animal eater and um, s is a plant eater mm, maybe okay let me check back at the uh, sentences given option p is a predator of s um s is a prey to r s is a prey to r and um Q is a predator of P and R is a prey to Q. Okay, so based on this sentence, S is a prey to R, I can tell that um, S is probably not a producer. Okay, because a food producer is not a predator to any animals, they do not run away. And so we do not consider them as a prey. So the answer should be option 4. Question 15, Hassan took uh, 50 grams of uh, leaves from four different plants, A, B, C, and D. He placed the leaves on separate plates um, in a room at 40 degrees Celsius under bright light. Okay, he weighed, the, uh, he weighed the plant, the leaves again 12 hours later and recorded the results in the table below. Okay, the mass of the leaves at first is all 50 grams. And then the mass of the leaves after 12 hours, there is a um, difference. Okay, 25 gram, 40, 35, and 30. Hassan can conclude that uh, the rate of something varies for different plants. Okay, Hassan can conclude that the rate of um, water loss, water gain, uh, definitely not water gain because the mass decreased, uh, the rate of photosynthesis, absorption of light also not it also not photosynthesis, it is water loss because um, the leaves are like plucked out and, and so they do not gain any more water from the plant okay, the answer will be number one Question 16, which of the following correctly shows the change in potential energy okay, as the ball falls from uh, Y to Z? Okay, so from Y to Z, the position is, um, there's a, it is getting lower, which means that the potential energy should decrease. Okay, okay so if it decreases, uh, let us choose, uh, that means option 1 and 2, they are out. Okay, 3 and 4. Four. The difference is at the end the potential energy for 3 is uh, 0 and then for number 4 there's a bit of potential energy okay because there is a small gap over here there's a small distance uh, from the floor so there will be some potential energy okay, in the ball so the answer would be number 4. Question 17, a spring balance is used to pull a wooden block over a tabletop. So the spring balance and then a wooden block. Okay, which of the following will affect the amount of force needed to pull the block? The mass of the wooden block, uh, yes. Roughness of the tabletop surface, uh, yes. Change in length of the spring, in the spring balance, nope. Okay, the answer would be A and B, number one. Question 18, a box was pushed off a ramp, it slides down the ramp before stopping at the position shown below. Okay, which arrow uh, correctly shows the direction of force that stopped the box? Okay, so um, a box was pushed off a ramp, it slides down, so that means at first it is sliding in this direction, right? Slide, okay, down. And so in this case, a frictional force is probably the one that is causing it to stop. And frictional force always um, is 
in the opposite direction of the motion. So B is the correct answer. Okay, number two shows the direction of the force that stopped the box. Question 19. Joyce placed a plant in a container of water in a flask near a source of light. Okay, she measured the amount of carbon dioxide in the flask using a data logger as shown below. The graph below shows the results recorded by the data logger. So this um, graph shows the amount of carbon dioxide and um, time. Okay, so uh, which of the following could have happened at X to cause the change in the amount of carbon dioxide as shown in the graph? Okay, so in the graph, uh, in, in the first part of the graph, it shows that the carbon dioxide is decreasing and then at point X, it increases, right? Okay, so it probably suggests that, um, is it because the light was switched off? Maybe, okay, if the light is switched off, then um, photosynthesis cannot continue and the amount of carbon dioxide will increase. The amount of light was increased, uh, no, okay, because if the light, if the amount of light is increased, then the uh, rate of photosynthesis will increase and then the amount of carbon dioxide will decrease. Option three, there was too much oxygen in the flask. No, the amount of oxygen doesn't really affect the rate of um, photosynthesis. Number four, there was not enough oxygen in the flask. Also not. Okay, so the answer will be number one, the light was switched off and the rate of photosynthesis decreased and so the amount of carbon dioxide increased at X. Question 20, the setup below was used to test how much light can pass through different materials. Okay, so there's a lamp material that's blocking it and there's a light sensor that measures the amount of light that passed through. Okay, which of the following correctly shows the changed and the changed and measured variable? Okay, so the changed variable. So let us read, uh, the setup below was used to test how much light can pass through different materials. So different materials will be the change. Okay, and how much light will be the measured? Okay, so different types of material and then the amount of light received by the sensor, the answer will be number two. Question 21, Muru conducted an experiment using the setup below. So the experiment setup, there is a beaker of water, there is a material that is um, that is supporting the beaker and then it is uh, being heated by a Bunsen burner, okay? He recorded the time taken for the water to boil when different materials P, Q and R were placed below the beaker of water in the table below. Okay, so P is a very good conductor of heat, Q is a poor conductor of heat, and R is a good conductor of heat. So we notice that the time taken for the water to boil is all the same. Okay, so which of the following correctly shows the volume of water used okay, at the start of each experiment. So if the time taken for all the water to boil is the same, it means that the amount of water used at the beginning is probably different. Okay, so P should have the highest volume. Okay, since it is a good, conduct, a good conductor of heat, very good, sorry. And then uh, Q should have the lowest. Okay, R should be the middle. So which option shows that um, P is the highest, which is 150, Q is the lowest, and R is the medium? Only option 2 shows that. Okay, so the answer is number 2. Question 22, Lewis tested the strength of different magnets uh, X, Y, and Z using the setup shown below. So there is a magnet, okay, distance is measured um, and there's a steel pin. Okay, he moved the magnet towards the steel pin and recorded the distance between the two when the steel pin was attracted to the magnet. 
in the table below. Okay, so there are three different mag magnets, X, Y, and Z, and then the distance when steel pin was attracted to the magnet, there are different distances. Okay, so which of the following shows the strength of the magnet from strongest to the weakest? Okay, so the strongest magnet will probably uh, will attract the pin from the longest distance. So this is the strongest. Okay, the weakest one will be uh, Y. Weakest because it needs to get um, the closest in order to attract. So X should be the first one and a Y should be the last one. Option 2 is the answer. Question 23. Rishi poured a substance X into a, con into a sealed container. He heated it until it boils. So okay, so the substance X is um, inside the sealed container and then it is heated until it boils. And uh, which of the following properties of substance X changed after boiling? Okay, so the mass did not change, okay, because um, it is in a sealed container, so the amount of substance X will remain the same. Okay, they're asking for what changed. The shape, um, shape changed, okay, and um, the volume also changed, yep. Okay, because at first the volume is this much is a lot lesser and then after it boils it become a um, gaseous stage I suppose and then it takes up the volume of the container so the answer will be number 3 B and C question 24 David wanted to find out how the conditions in the different locations okay, affect how fast clothes dry Okay, uh, different locations affect how fast okay, the clothes dry. So four similar shirts were soaked in water. Their masses were measured before they were hung out to dry in a similar manner at different locations. Okay, after one hour, he measured the mass of each shirt and recorded the table below. So the shirt A, B, C, D, the mass of the soaking is uh, 400, 400 and that's 500, 500. Mass after drying, okay, there are different mass. Okay, which two shirts should David use to explain the results of his experiment? Okay, so what does he want to find here? You want to find out how the, the how the conditions in the different locations affect. So different location is the change. Okay, how fast they dry is the measure. Okay, um, let me read the question a bit more because something is, seems to be missing. Four similar shirts were soaked in water. Their masses were measured before they hung out um, to dry in a similar manner at different locations. Okay, so it's already mentioned that they are at different locations. Okay, which two um, shirts should they be used to explain the results of his experiment? Is it let's go through the options one by one? Is it A and B? Okay, A and B. Um, A was exposed to less wind, but uh, that is wrong because if you compare between A and B, right? Okay, A the mass become lower, which suggests that it is like um like it becomes more dry. That means uh, there's less water and it should be exposed to more wind. Okay, and not less wind, so option 1 is out. Take, uh, let's take a look at A and D. A and D were exposed to the same surrounding temperature. A and D. Okay, not true because uh, the, um, the mass after soaking um, the water at the beginning is uh, not the same. Okay, so this probably suggests that um, this is probably in an environment that is warmer. Let me remove these two arrows first. Okay. B and C. Okay, so B and C. Uh, B and C were exposed to the same amount of wind. B and C. Uh, they have different starting mass also. So probably not. 
C and D, uh, D was exposed to a higher surrounding temperature than C. Okay, so you can see that uh, the mass of D decreased more, right? Okay, which suggests that yes, D was indeed exposed to a higher surrounding temperature than C. Okay, the answer will be number four. Question 25. The fruit was cut open as shown, so there are like brightly colored fleshy fruit and then there are a lot of uh, tiny seeds as uh, shown in the diagram. Okay, which of the following statements are correct? There were many ovules in the ovary, okay, since there are many tiny seeds, then A is correct. Okay, pollination and fertilization have taken place. Uh, yes, it is also probably correct, if not the fruit would not be here. The fruits and seeds were developed from a flower. Okay, so this is also correct. D, the seeds uh, would be dispersed by wind as they are small. This is wrong because uh, this is a brightly colored and fleshy fruit, so which suggests that it is dispersed by animals. Okay. So they are the, uh, they're asking for the uh, sentences as correct, which is uh, A, B, and C. A, B, and C is option 3. Question 26. Simon conducts an experiment to find out if the presence of water and air affect the germination of seeds. He placed the seeds in various pots. Okay, the table below shows the conditions of the pots. Okay, pot A, there are like a moist cotton wool in sealed container. B, moist cotton wool in open container. C is dry cotton wool in sealed container. And D is dry cotton wool in open container. Okay, which one of the following shows correctly the pair of pots that Simon could use to compare the results? Okay, so what does he want to find out? He wants to find out if the presence of uh, water and air affects the germination of seeds, right? Okay, so um, variable tested water pots used um, A, B. Okay, no, because A and B both have um, water, moist cotton wool, moist cotton wool. A and C, okay, sealed container. One has got a moist cotton wool, the other is dry. B and D, um, yep. Um, open container oh okay for number two a and c they are in a sealed container so maybe not okay on the next variable tested which is air so um a and c okay both are sealed so this is wrong Okay, B and C, uh, one is open, one is sealed, okay? But one is moist and one is dry, so this is also out. A and B both are moist and one is sealed and one is open, yes. Okay, C and D both are dry, so this is definitely out because if both are dry, then the C is not going to germinate, okay? So the answer would be number three. Question 27, the diagram below shows the circulatory system of a human and a fish. The arrows represent the direction of blood flow in the organisms. Okay, so the one on the left is the human circulatory system and this is the fish circulatory system. Okay, based on the diagrams above, which of the following statements is are correct? Okay, blood vessels at Y carry a blood rich in oxygen, Y is um, here. Um, this is wrong because uh, the blood rich in oxygen will be in X. Okay, B, blood vessels at M carry blood rich in oxygen, where is M? M is here, right? Okay, so this is correct because it just came out from the lungs. Okay, B is correct. Um, C, blood vessels at X carry blood rich in carbon dioxide this is wrong because just now i was um, 
telling you that X should be rich in um, oxygen and Y is the one that is rich in carbon dioxide. D, blood vessels at uh, P and Z carry blood rich in carbon dioxide. P and, uh, where is P? P and Z. Hmm. Can Z carry a blood rich in carbon dioxide? This is probably true because they are re like for the human circulatory system is returning to the lungs and for the fish it is returning to the gills. Okay, so D is also correct. So it's only B and D, which means the answer is number three. Okay, question 28. Julian wanted to test which rods WXY are conductors of electricity Okay, by using the circuit below. So the circuit below, there is like a light bulb A, oh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then there's also P1, P2, P3, position 1, 2 and 3. Okay, the table below shows which bulbs uh, light up when the rods were placed in different positions. Okay, let's go through uh, one by one, W, X, and Y. So this is gonna be W. This is uh, X and P3, this is Y. Okay, only Bob or light up. Okay, so this suggests that... Um, hmm. <clears throat> it's a bit difficult to tell at this moment. So I'm going to go to the other the other uh, options. Okay, let me um, take a look at it again. One and two did not light up, which means that a uh, W and X maybe one of them is a non-conductor or both of them. Okay, B three did not light up, which means that uh, Y is definitely a non-conductor of electricity. Okay, so I'm gonna put a cross over here. Okay, Y is a non-conductor. Mm, maybe I should write N C. Right, cross looks like an X. Non-conductor, non-conductor. Okay, so uh, let's go to the other option. This is um, X and this is uh, Y and this is W. Okay, so we already know that um, Y is a non-conductor. So this is an open circuit, which means that bulb 2 will not light up, bulb 1 will light up. Okay, and then in this case, um, only bulb 4 light up. Okay, which means that W is also a non-conductor. Okay, non-conductor non-conductor okay so which of the materials are conductors of electricity is only x we're gonna move on to booklet b the written section okay we're gonna start off with uh, question 29 the table below shows the setup for of uh, an experiment to find out if the amount of soil will affect the growth of plant X. The experiment was set up for three weeks. Okay, so there are different variables, pot A, B, and C, okay, number of leaves. Um, let me just underline the... It shows the setup of an experiment to find out if the amount of soil it would affect the growth of plant X. Okay, so in this case, the amount of soil should be the change variable and then the growth of plant X will be the measured variable. A okay, number of leaves at the start of the experiment, amount of soil okay, is changed. A okay, type of soil is sandy garden and clayey. They also change the type of soil, which means that Okay, this experiment is probably not a fair experiment. Okay, the amount of water added to the soil daily is also different. Okay, so for part A, what is the variable measured for this experiment? So the variable measured um, will be the uh, number of
it leaves at the end of the experiment. Okay, part B, why is this experiment not a fair test? Um, explain your answer. Okay, so we've already um, saw that the only change variable should be the amount of soil, but the type of soil and the amount of water added are also changed. Okay, so the type of our soil Okay, and amount of okay, water added to the soil daily okay, are changed. Okay, so for part C, based on the setup in the table above, state what can be done to make the experiment a fair test. Okay, so I would change the type of soil. To be garden Mm, to be garden soil for all pots. Okay, because uh, garden soil is more suitable for um, like many types of plants to grow on, so I chose the garden soil instead of sandy and clay. Okay, and then the change number two will be um, change. amount of water okay, added to soil daily okay, to 120 ml for all pots Okay, same thing, I will choose the one in the middle, not too much, not too little, 120 ml. Question 30, the diagram below shows a food web okay, in a community. So this is a food web, grass is eaten by the grasshopper, the grasshopper is eaten by the praying mantis and bird, and the toad. Okay, and then the praying mantis is eaten by the lizard, and then the snake will eat the toad and lizard. Okay, based on the food web above, construct a food chain with three types of organism. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this. Okay, because this is just nice um, three organisms. Okay, grass. It's eaten by the grasshopper. Okay, which is eaten by the bird. Okay, for part A, be careful not to make the mistake of choosing uh, this one because this is not three. Uh, as long as there is a continuation, then you have to continue until all the way to the end where you cannot continue anymore. Okay, so you have to choose a uh, grass, grasshopper, and bird because bird cannot continue anymore. Okay, part B, if the population of praying mantis is killed by a disease, okay, which uh, population in the food web would be most affected? Explain your answer. Okay, um, the population that is most affected will be the lizard. Okay, so I'm just gonna write um, lizard. Okay, lizard will be most affected. Okay, so we need to explain the reason is because uh, if you look at the food web, lizard, um, the praying mantis is the only food source to the lizard. Okay, so if all the praying mantis are killed by a disease, then the lizard will not have any more food. Okay, the praying mantis. 
It is the only food source for the lizard. Okay, so if the praying mantis Okay, work <clears throat> cute. <clears throat> okay, the lizard will not have any food. Okay, part C. <clears throat> Which action the removal of snake or grass from the community would have a greater effect on the organisms in the food web? Okay, explain your answer. So, um, the removal of the grass will have a greater effect on the organisms. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that is because a uh, grass is a food producer. Okay, and okay, all the organisms in the food web will depend on on it uh, directly or indirectly for food. Okay, uh, so grass is a food producer and all the organisms in the food web will <coughs> depend directly or indirectly okay, on the grass for food Okay, question 31. Ai Ling hung four similar objects A, B, C, and D above a basin of hot water. She measured the temperature of the objects after a few minutes. Okay, so there is a A, B, C, D which she is hanging above the basin of hot water. Okay, her results are shown in the table below. So object <clears throat> A, B, C, and D, the temperature of the object is um, 60, 38, 25, and 25. Okay, what is the relationship between the temperature of the object okay, and the distance between uh, object and water? So in this case, uh, okay, as the distance um, between the object and hot water increase, the temperature decreases. the object okay, and hot water increase okay, the temperature of the objects Object um, decreases. Okay, part B. Explain why the temperature had to be taken within a short period of time. Okay, the reason is uh, quite simple because the basin of hot water will always be losing um, heat to the surroundings, right? So if it is, if the Temperature is not taken within a short period of time, then the um, hot water will start to lose its heat energy and then the results of the experiment will not be that accurate anymore. <clears throat> okay, so explain why the temperature had to be taken within a short period of time. So we can say that um, the hot water 
is losing it to its surroundings. Okay, as time pass. Okay, hands. <clears throat> Temperature okay, had to be taken within a short period of time. Okay, to ensure that The results are accurate. Okay, part C. The lizard leaves its food as it crawls um, along the desert floor on a hot day. Okay, the food above the ground over here, and then uh, the food on the ground over here. Okay, explain why the feet have a uh, different temperature for the foot on the ground um, it is uh, gaining it from the uh, hot floor as um, Okay, as the foot is in contact. Okay, is in contact with the floor. Okay, for the foot above the ground, um, okay, the foot is. <coughs> not touching okay not touching the floor the hot floor okay hot floor so it does not gain okay, as much heat Okay, part D, it is observed that the lizard runs uh, quickly across the hot desert ground. Explain how this behavior helps the lizard okay, to reduce heat gain. Okay, so um, this reduces the time The lizard is in contact okay, with the hot desert ground okay, to reduce it again. <clears throat> Okay, so this behavior is very simple. If you've gone um, swimming on a hot day before, when you uh, walk from um, your sitting place, your changing place to the swimming pool, the floor will be very hot. So you probably will not take your own sweet time to walk there also because the floor is so hot. So you will quickly run towards the pool and quickly jump into it because you want to reduce the time your feet is touching the hot ground. Okay, question 32. Leroy wound the spring of a worn up toy car and released it. He wanted to find out how the number of times the toy car was wound up would affect the distance traveled by the toy car. Okay, he recorded the results of his experiment as shown below. So the number of times the toy car is wound up will be 5, 10, 15. And the distance traveled will be uh, recorded as uh, 12, 26, 39. 
Instead, the energy conversion that took place in the boxes below, so the energy in the spring will be um, elastic. Okay, potential <clears throat> energy, and then the energy in the toy carbon kinetic energy. Okay, part B, explain how winding the toy car more times allowed the car to travel further. Okay, so <clears throat> winding the toy car more times it will allow for more potential energy. Okay, to be converted okay, into more kinetic energy. <clears throat> okay, part C. Leroy wound the car, uh, the toy car, thirty times. The toy car did not move when released. Okay, suggest a possible reason. Okay, it is probably uh, the spring it was overstretched okay, and it broke Okay, question 33, Zihua kicked a ball up a ramp as shown below. So the ball will go up the ramp. Okay, explain in terms of energy conversion, energy conversion. Okay, why the ball will slow down as it moved up the ramp. Okay, so we're gonna start off with okay, as the ball <coughs> moved up the ramp. Okay, kinetic energy in the ball okay, will be converted into okay will be converted into potential energy Will be converted into potential. Maybe I can write a comma, heat, and sound energy. Okay, hands. <clears throat> the kinetic energy will. Reduce and okay, the ball will slow down. Question 34 The diagram below shows the cross section of a hole puncher. So, this is the diagram of a hole puncher. Okay, when the lever is pushed down, that means when the lever is pushed down, okay, it moves the cutter down to punch a hole through the stack of paper. Okay, when the lever is released, it moves back to its original position. Okay, name the force that allows the lever to return to its original position. Okay, name the force. So this is uh, elastic. Okay, spring force. Okay, because there's a spring here. Okay, part B. After using for a few months, the lever uh, of the hole puncher was unable to return to its original position after being pushed down. Okay, give a reason why the lever was unable to return to its <clears throat> original position so this is probably due to friction between um, 
the guides, the spring, and the cutter. Um, no, sorry, the, the guides and the spring. Okay, so um, the frictional force is um, it's too big for the uh, elastic spring force to overcome. Okay, the friction between. Okay, the guides and the spring. Okay, is mm, too much for the um, spring force to overcome. Okay, B part 2, oil was applied to the area of contact between the um, cutter and the guides. Okay, this allowed the lever to return to its original position again. Explain how oil helped the lever to return to its original position. Okay, so um, oil is a lubricant. Okay, and it reduces okay, friction between okay, the cutter and <clears throat> the guides. Okay, this will allow the spring to push okay to push the lever back to its okay original position okay so i noticed something um in part two which tells me that uh, my answer in part one is probably wrong because um i was applied to the area of contact between okay area of okay, i should use the highlighter area of contact between the cutter and the guys right okay so which means that uh, for my answer in B part 1, instead of saying the friction between the guides and the spring, I should say the friction between the okay, guides and the cutter. So I'm going to erase this part here. Okay, and I'm going to change it to friction between the guides and the okay, cutter. Okay, sometimes as you're doing the question, the questions in the later part will give you some clue as to how you should answer your um, questions in the earlier part. Okay, question 35. An experiment was carried out using the setup uh, shown below. The leaves were wrapped in different types of plastic bags. <clears throat> the bags were of uh, the same size. The plant was watered daily and placed under the sun. Okay, leaf P was wrapped in a clear plastic, leaf R wrapped in clear plastic bag with holes. Leaf Q is wrapped in a black plastic bag. Okay, so part uh, A, before the start of the experiment, the plant was left in complete darkness for two days to remove starch in the leaves. Okay, why was this necessary? Okay, so this is... Um, Okay, this is to ensure that okay, the starch okay, produced um, during <coughs> the experiment it only comes from uh, 
this is to ensure that the starch produced during the experiment okay, this is to ensure that the starch produced during the experiment only comes from uh, The start of the experiment okay, to ensure that it is a fair test. Okay, part B. After two days in the sun, uh, leaves P, Q, and R were removed and tested for starch using iodine. Okay, so you should be familiar with the iodine test. Uh, when iodine comes into contact with starch, it will turn okay, blue-black color. And the original color of the iodine is yellowish-brown. Okay, the table below shows the results of the starch test. Iodine is yellowish uh, brown liquid that turns uh, blue black in the presence of starch. Okay, leaf P turn, uh, leaf P remain yellowish brown, leaf Q remain yellowish brown, and R turn blue black. Okay, which leaf P, Q, and R's uh, starch test is incorrect and explain why. Okay, if you look at the experiment, a leaf Q is wrapped in a black plastic bag, so it should remain yellowish brown, okay? R is wrapped in a clear plastic bag with holes, so starch will be produced and it should turn blue black, okay? But if you look at a um, leaf P, it is wrapped in a clear plastic bag, so there is um, a certain amount of air inside the clear plastic bag at first, so um, and since the leaf P is exposed to sunlight also, so it should produce um, a fair amount of starch which means that P is the one that is wrong Okay, leaf P is incorrect okay, Since there is uh, in um, is that name for the bag? Okay, no. In um, the clear the um bag off leave P at first, and it is receiving sunlight. Okay, full stop, then um, leaf P Okay, can carry out photosynthesis okay, And um, produce starch Okay, maybe I should say um and produce um okay, produce glucose to be converted okay, into starch. Okay, question 36. Any heated up the uh, same amount of water sealed in containers W and X, which are made of different materials uh, to 90 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, she left both containers in the same room, measured the temperature of the water over 30 minutes and recorded them in the graph below. Okay, so we can see that this is um, X and this is, oh, sorry, this is W and this is X. Okay, why must the water in both beakers uh, reach, or why did the water in both beakers uh, reach the same temperature after 30 minutes? <clears throat> okay, um, uh... Mm, okay, in this case, I think I should... Okay, water in both beakers. Okay, we'll lose heat. to its surroundings and eventually become the same okay, as the room temperature Okay, for part B, explain which container of water W or X will freeze first if uh, they were placed, uh, they were both placed in the same freezer. Okay, so looking at the graph, right, we can tell that um, X is the better conductor of heat, right? A okay, better conductor. Okay, because we can see that uh, the temperature of X decreases faster than W. Okay, so this suggests that X is a better conductor of heat and if it is a better conductor of heat, okay, it will basically freeze first if they are uh, both placed into the same freezer. Okay, so I will say um, X will freeze first. Okay, in this case, I'm going to use um, the graph based on the graph. Okay, temperature of X decreases. <clears throat> faster than <clears throat> W. Okay, which suggests that okay um is it material <clears throat> x or container x okay i'm just gonna say it as uh, x okay which suggests which suggests that x is a better conductor <clears throat> of heat It ends um the water in X will freeze first. Okay, part C. Any wanted to test if the volume of water affects the rate of its temperature change. So she wants to find out if the volume of water affects the rate its temperature changes. Okay, so what changes um, should she make to the experiment? Okay, so um, she should um, 
it use the same uh, containers <coughs> and we change the volume of water <coughs> in the containers okay, to be different <clears throat> um, to be different volume okay just to make sure okay question 37 Joseph lowered a magnet towards an object as shown below. So there is a magnet and it is being lowered towards an object. Okay, as the magnet was lowered, the object moved up towards the magnet. Okay, what is the property of the material of the object? So this probably suggests that it is a magnetic material. A magnetic material. <coughs> Okay, part B, what should Joseph, uh, what would Joseph need to do to pick up a heavy object with the same magnet? Okay, he can uh, move in the magnet closer to the heavier object. Okay, question 38. Lillian poured some liquid into a glass and noticed uh, water droplets forming on the inside of the glass. Okay, after a few minutes as shown below. The surrounding temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So explain how the water droplets were formed. Okay, so once you see this, you should realize that um, basically this is a, a beaker of uh, hot liquid, right? Because it's only when uh, the liquid is hot, then the water droplets will be formed on the inside. Okay, if it is a beaker of cold water, then the water droplets will be formed on the outer surface. Okay, explain how the water droplets were formed. Okay, uh, warm water vapor. Okay, from the liquid. Okay, came into contact came into contact with the cooler um, the inner surface of the glass okay, and um, lose it and condense okay, into water droplets. Okay, part B, based on the observation, what can you tell about the temperature of the liquid? So, um, okay, based on the observation, okay, I can tell that okay, the temperature Okay, of the liquid is higher than a uh, 25 degree Celsius okay which is the surrounding temperature okay, because if it is uh, lower then condensation will not occur on the inner surface of the glass Okay, question 39. 
uh, three similar plates W, X and Y were washed and placed on the rack in front of a fan as shown below. Okay, so W, X and Y. Okay, how does turning on the fan help uh, dry the plates faster? Okay, turning on the fan. It produces a wind. Okay, and wind um it increases okay, the rate of evaporation. Okay, to help dry the plates faster. Okay, part B, which plate W, X, or Y will dry faster? Explain your answer. So in this case, uh, okay, the plate Y will dry faster. Okay, food produced. Okay, by the leaves. Above um, the cut. Mm. and not <clears throat> be transported down. Okay, and will <clears throat> a store at um, X. Okay, for part B, um, <clears throat> part Z, that means um, this part over here, grew bigger after one week. Okay, explain uh, why this is possible. Okay, because you can see that uh, branch Y over here, there are still leaves, okay, which is connected to part Z. Okay, so in this case, uh, the food produced by um, the, the, the leaves on the branch Y will be transported to Z. Okay, and it will not be transported to, and it will be transported to uh, Z and be stored at Z. Okay, that's why part Z will grow bigger. Okay, the food 
produced by the leaves okay, on branch Y will be transported okay, to um at Z <clears throat> and um stop there. Okay, hands up at Z okay, grew bigger. Okay, part C. Two weeks later, branch Y was removed as shown below. Okay, branch Y was removed. Okay, explain why the leaves above the plant wilted and the plant died after a few weeks. Okay, so uh, when... A branch Y was uh, removed. the roots of the plant it cannot uh, receive any more food okay, and the roots will Time. Okay, uh, when the roots die, okay, the plant, um, the plant will not um, be able. to take in <clears throat> water okay, and um, the plant will die um, in a few weeks or after a few weeks Okay, question 41. The circuit diagram below um, shows uh, how a simple electric bell system works. Okay, so uh, when the button was pressed down, the metal plate over here okay, moves uh, towards the iron bar over here and then it will uh, lifting the metal contact as well as the clapper to strike the bell once. Okay, give a reason why the metal plate uh, moved towards the iron bar when the button was pressed. Okay, um, okay, when the button was pressed, okay, a closed um. Circuit <clears throat> is formed Close circuit is formed okay, um, Electric okay, Current uh, will Flow the circuit normal magnetizing okay the iron rod
comma a track okay, attracting the um <clears throat> metal plate towards it Okay, so give a reason why the metal plate moved uh, towards the iron bar when the button was pressed. Okay. Okay, so part B, if the button was pressed down without releasing, the clapper will continuously strike the bell. Okay, explain how this happens. <clears throat> okay, so uh, when the clapper strike the bell, Okay, the um, <clears throat> metal contact will be lifted because over here there is a lifting the metal contact, right? Okay, the metal um, contact okay, will be lifted. Okay, and um, There will be an open circuit. Okay, so um, this will cause the metal plate. To fall back okay, and um, close the circuit again okay, um, <clears throat> okay this will cause the metal plate to fall back and close the circuit again uh, hence, um, the clapper would continuously strike the bell. Okay. The uh, um. Mm, hence, maybe I can say hence the metal plate. Will again um, be attracted by the iron bar, okay, by the iron bar. Okay, and um, okay, strike the bell. Continuously. Okay, part C, the bulb flickered continuously as the button was pressed. Okay, how um, show how we can connect the bulb to the circuit below such that it stays uh, lit while the button is pressed down. Okay, draw your own bulb and wires. So what you can do is you can connect um, the bulb and wire parallel like this. Okay, draw the light bulb and remember to connect it after the um, battery. Okay, so that when the switch is uh, closed, okay, then a solid like closed circuit will be formed over here. Okay. Okay, so we have come to the end of um, the paper. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment uh, on the video and um, you can also contact me through my uh, WhatsApp or my Facebook page. Um, if you're looking for any science tuition in the Pongo area, feel free to contact me also. And um, if not, then I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day.